While I was still in Bill Gates' country, Dr. Meyer recommended I check in with molecular biologist Jonathan Wells. What kind of names do they call you? A uh, creationist. What do you say back to them when they say you're a creationist? Well, I usually don't get the opportunity. What's at stake for you personally here? First of all, I love science. I think the way Darwinism corrupts the evidence, distorts the evidence, is bad for science. Uh, well, the other scientists would tell you to just shut up if you love science, okay? Because <laughs> you're, sort of, you're sort of being a bomb thrower into science. I am upsetting the apple cart, and I, yeah. think, I think it deserves to be upset in this case. Why? Because the evidence is being distorted to prop up a theory that I think doesn't fit it. Was Darwinism really that bad? Perhaps a change of scenery would give me a fresh perspective. Mr. Berlinski, I assume. How are you, sir? So where are you from originally? I was born in New York. Yes. Spent 31 years in Manhattan. Yes. And um, I spent a lot of time in California too. And uh, t tell me all the various universities where you studied or taught. No, oh, I was at Princeton, then I had a professorship at Stanford, and then I left Stanford, and I taught at Rutgers. I left Rutgers, and I taught at the City College in New York. I left the City College of New York. I taught at the Baruch College. I taught at San what Jose. What did you teach at Baruch College? Anything they wanted. Come on in. Thank you, Monsieur. What an old building. Wow. It's the oldest in Paris. You're kidding. Merci, Monsieur. Ah, je vous en prie, Monsieur. Merci. Wow, this is fabulous. Let's put it this way. Before you can ask, is Darwinian theory correct or not, you have to ask the preliminary question, is it clear enough so that it could be correct? That's a very different question. One of, one of my um, prevailing doctrines about Darwinian theory is, man, that, that thing is just a mess. It's like looking into a room full of smoke. Um, noth nothing in the theory is precisely, clearly, carefully defined or delineated. It lacks all of the rigor one expects from mathematical physics, and mathematical physics lacks all of the rigor one expects from mathematics. So we're talking about a gradual descent down the level of intelligibility until we reach evolutionary biology. We don't even know what a species is, for heaven's sakes. So his theory is smoke, but elegant smoke. There's a certain elegance to it, but you know, I think Einstein had the appropriate remark. He preferred to leave elegance to his tailor. A room full of smoke? That certainly wasn't what I was hearing from prominent Darwinists like Richard Dawkins. Evolution is a fact. It's a fact which is established as securely as essentially any other fact that we have in science. Richard Dawkins is so confident that evolution is a fact and that therefore God doesn't exist, that he has devoted his entire life to spreading the evolution gospel. I'm an atheist with respect to the Judeo-Christian God because there is not a shred of evidence in favor of the Judeo-Christian God. It is, it is completely right to say that since the evidence for evolution is so absolutely, totally overwhelming, nobody who looks at it could possibly doubt that if they were sane uh, and not stupid. So the only remaining possibility is that they're ignorant, and, the most, and most people who don't believe in evolution are indeed ignorant. But the people I spoke with weren't ignorant. They were highly credentialed scientists. So there had to be something else going on here. So you think the whole theory of evolution is false or just certain parts of it? Well, again, evolution is a slippery word. I would say minor changes within species happen. But Darwin didn't write a book called how species, how existing species change over time. He wrote a book called The Origin of Species. He purported oh. to show how this same process I see. leads to new species, in I fact, see. every species. And the evidence for that grand claim is, in my opinion, almost totally lacking. How does Darwin, or, or Dar Darwinism, say that life began? Well, he didn't know, and in fact, nobody knows. So. Darwinism, strictly defined, starts after the origin of life and deals only with living things. Well, how can there be a theory about life without a theory about how life began? Well, a, a grand overarching 
evolutionary story, of course, does include the origin of life. But Darwin's theory doesn't begin until you have the first cell. Well, does someone have a theory about how life began? This is the story of a small planet in space called Earth. For a typical Darwinian explanation of how life originated, Dr. Wells directed me toward this documentary. The chemical elements essential for life, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon, and nitrogen, were now in place. What was needed was a way of combining them. Perhaps the energy came from lightning. Whatever it was. Excuse me? Whatever it was, energy managed to arrange these chemical ingredients in just the right way. Whatever it was? I was hoping for something a little more scientific. The most popular idea has been that life emerged spontaneously from primordial soup. In 1953, Stanley Miller mixed water, methane, ammonia, and hydrogen to simulate the early Earth's atmosphere. Then he ran electricity through it in an attempt to jumpstart life. It didn't work. While the initial results seemed promising, 50 years later, most serious scientists have abandoned this approach in favor of alternate theories. Prominent Darwinist Michael Roos attempted to explain one of them to me. He wasn't kidding. How did we get from an inorganic world to the world of the cell? Well, one popular theory is that it might have started off on the backs of crystals. My crystal ball molecules piggybacked on the back of crystals forming and that this led to more and more complex but of course the nice thing about crystals is every now and then you get mistakes mutations and that this opens the way for natural selection but but at one point there was not a living thing yeah and then there was a living thing how did that happen well this is the i've just told you and i don't see any reason why you shouldn't go from very simple to more and more complex to more and more I don't complex. either I don't either but I don't know how you get from mud to a living cell that's my question yes well I've told you I think it's on the back I want more time on the backs of crystals of the backs of crystals is at least one hypothesis yes so so that's your theory and you think that is more likely and less far-fetched than intelligent design I think it is I wouldn't put Ben Stein's money on Dr. Roos's joy riding crystals but it did make me wonder What were the chances of life arising on its own? 